So I'm going to go through how to draw the brainstem nuclei, and so that includes all the nuclei of the cranial nerves located within the brainstem. So in order to start off, what you kind of need to understand is how these particular um, sensory and motor columns are organized. So what we've got is, for example, in a normal spinal cord section. Yeah, you've got these particular structures and you'd probably recognize that this over here is the dorsal horn. That's the ventral horn. And from the ventral horn on this part, ventral horn, this contains motor fibers, whereas sensory signals come into over here the dorsal horn. And so to add a bit more, um, to build a bit more knowledge into this, what we can do is divide this into two segments. So if you draw a line down here, this particular line can be called the sulcus limitans. And just think of this as a particular dividing line between the motor components and the sensory components. What we're going to build on now are uh, particular um, uh, sensory columns as well as motor columns that we're going to add on to this. So, um, first off, we're going to start off with this particular component called general somatic efferent. Efferent. So GSE. What GSE is, it's basically just motor fibers. Efferent meaning that it goes from the spinal cord outside and somatic meaning that it's muscle. So the GSE is located here. And then conversely, since you've got a general somatic efferent, you also have a general somatic afferent. So that would be general somatic, sorry, uh, afferent. So G S A. And that's located over here. G S A. And now on the other hand, so these these are from the general somatic afferents are muscle afferents. Afferent meaning that they they're sensory fibers that come from the muscle going into uh, going into the spinal cord and then they'll go up to the brain. So that's the somatic afferent, so somatic for muscle once again. And on the other hand, what we have are viscera. And what's viscera? So viscera are the soft tissues and uh, sorry the internal organs. So you need also visceral efferent and afferents, and that's what we're going to add on now. So you now have general visceral efferent, G-E-F, sorry, <laughs> I'm not thinking straight, G-V-F, G-V-E, sorry, G-V-E. So general visceral efferent goes here, and then you also have a general visceral afferent. So these receive signals and give signals to the, uh, the internal organs. So that's GVA. GVA. So as you can probably recognize, is that the GSE kind of over here, this will make up the, well, I should color code it, but that's all right. So GV, GSE, this makes up the anterior horn. And notice the location of these guys over here. Sometimes in particular parts of the th uh, lumbar, no, in the thoracic region of the spinal cord, you get this lateral horn, which gives off sympathetic fibers. And that's pretty much where they come from, and it makes sense because they give off um, fibers that innovate the uh, the internal organs.
And then on the other hand over here, the general somatic afferents, um, they receive signals from the muscle to this particular region. So it's important as a very first step to build up a concept of where these four nuclei, uh, not nuclei, columns lie. And once you've got that in mind, what we're going to do now is go into the brainstem. For example, once again this is poorly drawn, but so you've got the central canal here. I'm only drawing half of it, and the purpose is just um, and and so it is a mirror image. The same thing happens on both sides, but what I'm just going to do is just illustrate what happens on this one side. So this is the central canal where uh, the CSF will flow, and what you've got is that in the brainstem, when you notice previously the four columns, they were stacked pretty much in a vertical plane over here, so you've got them lining up one, two, three, four, like that. What happens is that in this in the brainstem, these guys fan out to the side, so they become all in a line. And what happens as well is that you're going to we're going to add in new columns, and this is quite important to understand. So once again, we're going to draw the sulcus limitans that denotes the two um, two distinct regions. And so on this half, it's going to be sensory, and on this half is going to be motor. Okay. So starting off again, we've got our general somatic efferent, so the general motor fibers that go and innervate muscles and tell them what to do. And also, you've still got the general somatic afferent, the primary sensory fibers that came from the, or not primary necessarily, but the sensory fibers from muscles that came in to, through the spinal cord and up into the brainstem. So that's where they end up. Then we still have the same general visceral efferent, those motor fibers going down to the organs, and also you still have general visceral afferents. So the sensory fibers from the muscle, uh, sorry, from the internal organs that are coming up. But now what we're going to do are add in a few more things. So one new thing that pops up is this thing called the special visceral efferent. So special visceral efferent. And what makes it so special? So it's a special visceral efferent because it is a motor fiber that goes to muscles still, although it's called visceral, it still actually, it still innervates muscles, and these muscles, on the other hand, are derivatives from the pharyngeal arches. In other words, they, were, they are special, they weren't the general, uh, vis uh, general muscles, but what these guys happen to do is that they developed into, let's say, the facial muscles, um, the muscles that you use for swallowing in the pharynx, so anything in, on the face generally are uh, that um, so muscle fibers that are on the face would be innervated by these special visceral efferents and that's the general that's the general idea that I've got in my mind okay so you've got this new nuclei special visceral efferent and if you can imagine there's a special visceral afferent then you are correct because there is a special visceral afferent coming back in. So that's located here, the SVA. And then finally, just one last one over here, you've got a special somatic sensory. So sen 
sorry, S. No, sorry, my bad. Not special somatic sensory. Okay, cross that out, cross that out. It was a special somatic afferent. Special somatic afferent, SSA. Okay. And what does this special somatic afferent do? Special somatic afferent means that it's a, it's basically referring to special, what it generally means is it's eyesight, so the vision, it's referring to hearing, and um, also your sense of balance, and that would all, and also, you know, your sense of smell, that's all special somatic afferents. But one thing to keep in mind is that in the brainstem, smell and vision aren't really going into the brainstem, although they are special somatic afferent senses. It's the hearing and the balance that's the main thing that's that goes into the brainstem. So, in short, these are the distinct columns that you have to keep in mind when you when we go when we're going to organize out how to draw the brainstem nuclei.